Excellencies, Ambassadors, and Representative of the Diplomatic Corps, Ministers of Health uh, from Guinea, of course, and also particularly from Sierra Leone and Liberia, representing their presidents. Leaders from the civil society organizations, NGOs, scientists and experts, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to all of you. I have come here, first and foremost, to thank the governments of Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone, your healthcare workers, your scientists, and your people, under the leadership of the president, for triumphing over the Ebola outbreak. And so that has severely devastated your countries for so long. And I want to also to thank the international partners for their support and collaboration. President Alpha Conde, I hope you remember our meeting some time ago. To be exact, 1st of May, 2014. On that occasion, you have asked WHO, me directly, to support Guinea, to work with other partners to develop a Ebola vaccine. I have done so. Last December, WHO published the results from the Guinea Ring vaccination trial, showing that the world's first Ebola vaccine provides substantial protection. Among the thousands of people who consented to be vaccinated, no cases of Ebola virus disease occurred. The vaccine trial was exceptional for several reasons. It used a novel design focused on a ring of epidemiologically linked people. One of the strategies that WHO used in the past and successfully eradicated smallpox. The study design ensured that the trial took place in pockets of the population with a high incidence of Ebola infection and a high risk of further transmission. A deliberate decision was made to tailor the logistical challenges in the implementation of the trial to the local conditions. For those scientists who've been you know, familiar with clinical trials, you know how challenging the local context is. The close collaboration with and the support from the Guinea national authorities was a catalytic factor in the successful implementation of the clinical trial. The conditions were challenging. The healthcare system, as we all know, in Guinea was strained by the outbreak. Potential trial participants were worried. They were worried about a candidate vaccine made by foreign people. And the response teams were facing security issues. The study showed the ability of the international team in collaboration with colleagues in Guinea to gather efficacy data for an Ebola vaccine during an outbreak in a developing country with the associated limitations in healthcare infrastructure. Truly, this is a remarkable achievement. Several media outlets described the publication of the vaccine trial results as the best news given to the world in 2016. Scientists do not yet know exactly where in nature the Ebola, Ebola virus hides between outbreaks, but nearly all experts agree that another outbreak of Ebola is inevitable. When this occurs, ladies and gentlemen, the world will be far better prepared as a novel approach for Ebola control, ring vaccination can be added to the established control measures. The strategy can have a significant impact, even if supplies of vaccines are initially limited. And on this, I wish to thank Gavi for supporting a stockpile of Ebola vaccines in WHO for emergency use, subject to further work 
uh, by the company, of course, in this case, Merck, uh, to seek um, you know, licensing approval. Health and medical professions will have something to offer to those who have been exposed to the virus, either in households or healthcare facilities, which goes beyond isolation and quarantine. The phase three ring vaccination trial was given the name, well, my French is rather limited, and let me try the pronunciation. Ebola Kasafit? Yeah. And in English, it means Ebola, that's enough. I am certainly, you know, I'm certain that, you know, everyone in the three countries affected felt that they had had enough of Ebola. By collaborating in vaccine trials, your people, I pay tribute to all of them, fought back, and you win the battle. I agree with the media. A safe and efficacious Ebola vaccine was the world's best gift during 2016. I thank scientists from Guinea, the Guinean National Medicine and Regulatory Agency, and the National Ethics Committee. Your support was critical, critically important for the international team. Apart from funding provided by WHO herself, yes, WHO actually is quite a poor organization in terms of finance, but we still, President Eva Kondi, because of your request, we squeezed a, bit, a little bit of money to support uh, the uh, clinical trial. And the trial actually also benefited greatly from the generous financial support by the UK Wellcome Trust, the UK government, MSF, the Norwegian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the Canadian government. I also wish to thank US NIH, US CDC, and the Russian Federation scientists. I know they are continuing to work on other Ebola vaccines and other medical interventions for Ebola. Ebola, there are many lessons to be learned by all of us. One such lesson is the power of partnership and the power of collaboration. So ladies and gentlemen, honorable ministers, the contribution of your collaborative efforts goes well beyond, you know, just delivering a Ebola vaccine. There are many spillover effects. Let me just give you one. During the Ebola outbreak, WHO acquired extensive experience in facilitating research and development for new medical products, supported by numerous governments, public and private entities, and scientists. Thanks to that support, the Ebola vaccine was developed and tested in 12 months as compared with the 5 to 10 years usually needed for such a process if you take it in a sequential manner. However, at that time there was no formal framework in place to coordinate the efforts of all the partners and actors. Learning from that experience, WHO has, at the request of member states, developed the WHO R&D blueprint in 2016, and with the primary purpose of providing a framework of collaboration by setting up collaborative models, standardized protocols for clinical trials, and pathways for accelerated regulatory approval in advance. And this is preparedness. In the R&D blueprint, if we can work, you know, collaboratively, as I said, it can reduce, you know, the licensing and sale of medical interventions for outbreaks, you know, from years to months. So I would encourage partners to build on that successive model and be prepared for the next Ebola crisis. As I said, you know, at this point in time, we still do not have one that is authorized for marketing yet. But WHO has developed an emergency procedure under its pre-qualification and make sure that there is rapid assessment 
of innovative health products during public health emergencies and so that all UN agencies, other procurement agencies can choose to procure quality assured products. And that's why I thank Gabi once again uh, for working with us to have an emergency stockpile in the picture. To develop the R&D blueprint and support these innovation, WHO, of course, have to convene a series of expert <coughs> consultations. And one of these consultations led to the development and the establishment of a coalition, which is called Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, in short, SEPI. And SEPI has been able to you know, rally support from countries and industry and partners to announce an initial funding support of close to $500 million to support R&D for you know, high-impact pathogens. And 